Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the podcast. My name is John Bishop, and you're listening to Art Life, the podcast. Welcome back to the show. Listen, been very, very busy again. I know I say that all the time, but we're busy all the time. Uh, wanted to talk a little bit about uh, today about what it is that we need from an art studio. If you've been listening at all to previous podcasts or to the to the vlog, you'll know that we've been looking for another property. We've been looking to buy a home, but more than a home, a, a, a place that we can use as like the hub central of our art business. So we're looking for a place that has gallery space and studio space, indoor and outdoor room, a, a place that could be a destination for collectors and, and customers, a place where we could host exhibitions and art events, um, as well as, you know, our home uh, that will be able to give us the ability to expand our business and grow. Um, and we're just, we're really at a, a crossroad where we, we feel like we're outgrowing the space that we're in and uh, we need to make some changes. So we have been looking for some time now, several months, at uh, different properties. Uh, we found out pretty quickly that we really can't afford to buy anything uh, close in to where our studios are, close to downtown Houston. Uh, the prices are just prohibitive. And in fact, um, we're hard pressed to find much that we can afford even as far away as we are currently. And that would make no sense at all unless we just got a whole lot more for our money. And we actually ran into a couple of properties that we utterly fell in love with. There was a, a property, a big, a big commercial property. I think it was an old car showroom in uh, Baytown, Texas right in the arts district. It was big, it was 5,000 square feet, uh, had everything that we needed, indoor and outdoor space. It was, it was just in a, a location that not, we were afraid not many people would go. Um, it is kind of not too far from, from downtown Houston, but it is, you have to pass a bunch of refineries and things. It's not on the way to anything. And it just struck us that for that price, we weren't sure anybody would ever come and see us, though we loved the property. And then we happened across um, basically an old church that had been converted into some, some medical offices in Brenham, Texas, which is still about an hour's drive from downtown, which is about what we drive now from Huntsville. And However, people go to Brenham. Brenham is kind of a destination in itself. It's very close to a place called Round Top where there's a huge antique and art fair a couple of times a year and people make, make their annual incomes just off those two events. So there were a lot of good reasons to be in Brenham. Plus it's a quiet town. It's, it's still not too big. It wouldn't, wouldn't feel unsafe. Uh, we fell in love with the place. We, we put in a bid and they wanted 27,000 more than we offered. And we said, well, we'll just go and get a, a, a loan to bridge that gap. But when we went to get the loan, sure, sure enough, uh, no one would give us a loan. We are freelance uh, artists. We don't have a guaranteed monthly income. And so nobody will touch us. So we were at, not, unable to secure the loan and someone else swooped in and, and bought the property which just broke our hearts. So we knew that we were looking at something unorthodox, that we, we, were, we were willing to kind of step outside the natural bounds of just buying a big home with a, with a garage that you could turn into a studio. Uh, and so that, that kind of opened up possibilities for us. And we looked all over. We looked at places that were even more rural than we are now that we could afford, get a lot of space, your money goes farther, but they were so far removed, we figured no one would ever go there. Um, we also looked at the possibility of moving abroad, moving to Romania, moving to Portugal, moving to Mexico, and we entertained those thoughts for some time. But again, we're like, who will ever come and see us? Even if you move to Romania and could live off very little, Who's going to buy your art in Romania? We'd have to travel 
to Germany and to, to France and, and England to just to sell. So those kinds of things just went by the wayside. And, and we began to realize that actually we don't have many choices. Uh, if we spend all our money on a property that we can just barely afford, we'll have no money to fix it up, we'll have no money to travel, we'll have no money to live off of uh, in case of hard times, which after COVID, we understand that hard times are out there. And so we thought, okay, what are our options? And really, the only option we have is to stay put. And uh, at first I felt a little trapped by that, and I thought, okay, well, what is the problem? What is it that we need from a studio that we're not getting now? Uh, we had two studios at uh, Silver Street Studios in, in uh, Houston, part of the Sawyer Yard Complex. And we gave up both of those studios and got a larger studio right by the main entrance, which is a great location. We got that studio and we're going to share it. And what that does, it gives us a bigger space, it gives us more traffic because it's better situated, and it allows us to, to divide and conquer. We don't both need to go in every day. Today, for example, Bogdan went into Houston, I stayed home, I'm working on social media, I'm working on this, this podcast and on my blog, as well as making dinner. So we don't both have to to do both things, uh, which was kind of the plan we had instigated in working out uh, a workable solution for moving to Brenham. So we have done that. We have moved to the studio, to one, a larger studio. We're not saving any money, but we think we'll be able to save, we'll make more money and we'll be able to make fewer trips. We don't have to go in every day. If we don't go in every day, we need to be able to work from home, and that has been problematic, and the reason why we ended up with two studios in Houston in the first place. So it became kind of a conversation for us to figure out what are the things that we absolutely need to have from a studio in order to make our business work right now and for the foreseeable future. And we came up with 10 things, and I'm gonna go through them. And um, I'm, I'm really starting to feel much better. I think the whole kind of impetus behind this is that I don't hear no very well. And it's not that I'm, I'm belligerent or that I don't appreciate or respect or, or uh, understand, uh, for example, them refusing to give us a loan and things like that. It's not that I don't understand no. It's just that I figure if, if I walk up to a door and it's locked, I'll try another door and another door and another door until I can get in because I don't want to give up on my dream just because I ran into an obstacle. Um, and so that's what I'm doing now. I'm trying to say, okay, how do I make this work? What would have to happen for this to work? And the first thing that we knew that we needed was space. We need space to create. We need space to run a business. We need space to do these kinds of videos uh, and to edit them. We need space to store. We need space to store completed um, inventory. We just need more room and we need room inside and outside. <clears throat> we also need gallery space. And gallery space is a place we need to have where people will actually show up so that we can sell our art and, and show our art. We can't do that from home. We could set up a, a gallery here in our living room, but number one, no one would ever come here. Number two, we have HOA requirements, uh, restrictions that say we can't run a business out of our uh, home, a commercial enterprise out of our home, and that makes sense. So we can't do that bit from home but we do have space. We have space inside and outside, but not a lot of it. It's not dedicated space. You'll see the room that I'm in right now is my office, my library, my art studio, all smashed in together and well, as well as my meditation space. 
And so when I'm doing my splatter paintings, uh, I noticed that my favorite chair now has little red spots on it from where I splattered some of the paint. Uh, that's going to happen if I don't have a dedicated space or enough room to be creative. So um, the, another thing that we need, the third thing, is office space. We need a place to actually run the business from. And that means file cabinets, and that means uh, plenty of office supplies to do the scanning, to do the printing, to do the to do the copying, to, to take care of all the record keeping and filing requirements to run a small business. And I need a place to do that. It doesn't have to be a big space, but I need a dedicated space. Because right now, I do some of it home, I do some of it at the studio, I never know where things are, I've got two sets of files. No, that has to stop. I need one dedicated space. Now I could do that from home, I could also do that from the new studio because we have plenty of room in the new studio. Uh, number four, we need a place to live. We need a nice, safe, comfortable space in which to live. Now looking at the budget that we have, looking at the kinds of property we can actually afford near Houston, um, the things we could afford nobody would want to live in, in neighborhoods nobody would want, no one would feel safe walking. So. We did realize that we do have that need to feel safe and secure in a comfortable environment. We love our home. We're in a golf community, a nice little uh, retire, almost a retirement community. The younger people are moving in. It's, um, it's very, very safe, very, very quiet. We're out looking out over the lake. We have deer coming up to the porch. Um, we just love it here. And it's a place where I feel very comfortable and very safe that's important and, uh, and a big, big requirement for our living quarters. Uh, as I mentioned, we need some outdoor creative space. Where we are in Houston at the, at the shared kind of studio uh, uh, place, uh, we can't do things like spray paint because the fumes, we can't use uh, uh, varnishes that are, are sm have strong smells because it bothers the other tenants. We can't do things like power tools, this, uh, circular saws, or we can't do that kind of construction. Uh, we can't lay things out in the sun to dry if we're trying to get things dried quickly or for special effects. I can do all of those things here at home, uh, but I can't do those things at the studio in Houston. So um, uh, number six, another thing we, we need very, very badly is um, we need storage. We need storage for all our supplies. We need storage for our, our canvases, uh, for the stretchers, and for, for the created work, for the finished product. We have all this inventory that is just, we're just tripping over and it gets dinged up and, and then we have to fix it or, or change it. Uh, we need some storage space. Uh, we have plenty of storage here at the house. Uh, we could also store at the studio, but less so. We also need, as I mentioned a minute ago, num number eight is, um, well, that was number six is supply storage. Number seven was inventory storage because that's, it has to be stored safely and in air conditioning or here things will just mold over. Uh, number eight was the idea of having a dedicated space to do video. When we, when we were working across the street at my mom's old house uh, before we sold it, it was great. I walked in, I had a room, the lighting was already set up, the, the tripod was there, the backdrop was there, I had only to turn on the lights and to start recording. Uh, I kind of missed that. I would love to have that happen again. So to be able to have dedicated space for creation of social media, uh, vlogs, the blogs, the podcasts, uh, those kinds of things is really, really important to me and would help our productivity quite a bit. Um, but having said that, we also have, we need a space to create video production uh, and photography. Uh, we need a place because we still do commercial photography 
and we do art, uh, fine art photography, we do headshots, we do corporate videos and social media clips for people. Uh, professionally, we need some space to be able to shoot video, shoot photography, and it needs to be there at, at the studio in Houston because it needs to be convenient for the customers to show up. Uh, and we have that kind of space now with the larger studio. We also need a, pay, a, a place to be able to teach and to have meetings and to have exhibitions. We need some public space that we can, some flex space that we could actually have programming and events. And again, we do have that kind of space in Houston. We don't have a lot of storage space there for tables and for, for catering supplies and for chairs and, uh, and those kinds of things. But as you may know from previous episodes, we're looking at buying a van. And if we have a van and can travel the van back and forth, we can transport these things back and forth quite easily, which is now quite a, quite a difficult thing in, in a small, uh, in a sedan. Um, we also need, and, and the last one, the last piece, is that we need, we need to be a destination. We need a place where people feel comfortable coming, where there's parking, where there's bathrooms, and it's a secure place. It's a place that they can get to easily from where they are. Uh, signage is there. It, it's, it's just established, and, and that is absolutely provided by Silver Street Studios in Sawyer Yards. So what I'm looking at is looking at these 10 things that we figure we absolutely needed I can kind of make this happen. I have the storage space I need. I have the meeting space that I need. I have the productivity space that I need. And I have the kind of office management, uh, office uh, skills, you know, office duties that I have to perform. The only problem that I run into is that this house does not have adequate space for me and Bogdan to have creative space. And so we started looking. We have a garage space and we have a covered patio space off the living room. Both of those could be easily converted into studios for myself and for Bogdan. We have talked to a contractor, we would have adequate ventilation and flooring and it, it would be a very minor thing to upgrade both of those spaces into into studio spaces which would mean that I could work from home I could load things in the van I could take them to Houston to sell them and while I'm there I can do the business stuff for, for the for the uh, for the art business Bogdan could work from home he could load things into the van. He could drive to Houston. He could do video production, the editing and things at the, at the studio. He could also photograph and video there. We could have events there and come back here to a home that we enjoy. So all of a sudden we thought, if we can take that money that we were gonna spend on buying a new dream home somewhere else, we put that money into this house to make it accessible and, and productive enough for us to fill those 10, 10 items on our wish list, our need list, then we're done. Uh, and we would spend a lot less money renovating these two spaces and staying in a house we actually enjoy, making it useful enough for us in the expansion of our business. So that's where we are right now. Uh, I'd love to know what your thoughts are. If you think I've missed anything, if you, if you have different kinds of needs that, uh, that you find uh, are your requirements for your art studio, uh, I'd love to have the conversation. Feel free to leave comments. Uh, and uh, check out our other social media. Uh, we do the, the weekly vlog, the weekly art chat, which is a live show. I do the podcast, I do a blog. Uh, and, and we are all over social media. So I'd love to connect with you. Let me hear from you. And other than that, 
I hope you have a great week, and I'll talk to you again in the next episode. Thanks so much now. Bye.